Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at the various ways of rating, ranking, and marking your photos in Lightroom. Um, there are all kinds of ways to do this and what I mean by all kinds of ways is three. <laughs> but there are really three ways to do it and people use them in a variety of different ways. Everyone has their own workflow for using these methods. So what I'm about to tell you is simply my workflow. You'll take from it what you will, but you'll develop your own or you'll copy mine. I don't really care. But whatever way you decide to do it is your way. And that's fine. There's no set rule for how these things have to be used. So let me explain what I'm talking about. Here I am in Lightroom. I'm in a collection. And in this collection, I've got um, here at the bottom, I've turned on the pick flags, star ratings, and color labels. These are three common ways of rating, ranking, and marking your photos. Now, but like I said, there's no rule. There's no rule that says a good photo has to be purple. There's no rule that says a good photo has to be a pick. There's no rule that says a good photo has to be five stars. It's whatever way you want to decide to use these. So I know people that only use the pick flags, good, bad good, bad. That's it. No other in between. I know people that use star ratings exclusively. That's all they do. One star is bad. Three stars just okay. Five stars portfolio quality. I know people that use the color labels. Color labels for the client, the photographer, the makeup artist, the, um, the vendor, whoever it was that they were doing the shoot for. Archival purposes. Red goes into portfolio. Green gets an edit right away. Purple gets this whatever it is. So everyone uses them differently. It's up to you. So I'm going to show you my way. Now I use, I very rarely use the star ratings. I mainly use the pick flags and reject flags, of course, and the color labels. So how does my workflow work? Well, when I'm looking at the photos, I have first determined who's the customer. Am I the customer? Meaning I'm the photographer. They're for me. I took them on vacation. They're my shots. doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. Then in that case, if I like a photo that I'm really, really going to use and it's my, one of my favorites, I'm going to mark it as a pick because I reserve pick flags for the customer's picks. In other words, the, whoever is the customer, whether it's you or someone else, if it's their choice, then it's a pick flag. Now, what do I use the color labels for then? Well, I use the color labels, especially if I'm not the customer. For example, let's say I did this shoot of Montana for the Montana Free Press, if there's such a thing, then they're the customer. But I still like photos in here that I'm going to use for myself. So in that case, if it's a photo I like for me personally, then it's a green flag. Why green? I don't know. It's the first color I used when the flags came out. If, it, if I'm standing around the people I'm doing the shoot with, makeup artist, model, um, hairstylist, whatever. Then I, I divvy up the colors as we're standing around reviewing the photos for whoever screams out, oh, yeah, wow, I really like that photo. So in my case, my color is green. If I'm working with a model, he or, he or she, their color is blue. If I'm working with a stylist, hairstylist, wardrobe stylist, whatever, makeup artist, then their color is yellow. So if, if they really like a photo they're going to use or want to possibly use, then it's yellow. If the, if the model is standing there and he or she says, oh my God, that's really great. I really like that pose. Then I immediately mark it blue. Now that doesn't mean that when I give the photos to them to review, meaning give them their proofs, that they're actually going to stick to those choices. But what I'm doing is helping them narrow down the ones that they really liked while they were standing there in studio to help them make their final selections. And when they do make those final selections, they're picks. Because those are the ones they're paying for, or that we're editing, or that they really, 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 really want. The blues were kind of, hey, I really like those while I was standing there, but I may not stick to that at the end of the day. So here's how it works. First, I uh, since I'm in Lightroom 5, I can hit the letter F to bring up full screen. Now, if let's again, we're pretending these are for someone else. If I really like this photo and I'm going to use it, then letter or number eight for green, because that's the keyboard shortcut for green. That's my color. Then I hit the right arrow key to go to the next photo. Let's say the customer of the Montana Free Press is standing there and, oh my God, that photo's great. 
then I would hit number nine because that's blue. And again, they may not decide on that photo. They may get back and say, eh, it's kind of not so great. But at least they knew which ones were blue that they kind of liked while they were standing there. Um, I don't like this photo at all. It says nothing to me. So I'm never, ever, ever going to use it. I don't even want the client to pick it. Therefore, I'm never going to let them see it. So now it's going to be the letter X for reject. And you can see the little flags in the lower left-hand corner. As I press them, they'll pop up just for a second to denote that you pressed that um, particular flag. Now, um, let's say that there's a photo that's just okay. No, everyone was silent. No one said anything. I'm not saying anything. It's just okay. Some people would mark that as a three star. I just leave it unmarked because that's what an okay photo is. It's not marked as a great. It's not marked as a reject. It's just okay. There's no need to mark it anything. Now, let's say the client liked this one. Nine. I like this one. Eight. Everyone. No, 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 no. Take that back. No one likes this one. Bad. Everyone likes this one. Everyone screamed out at the same time, oh my God, that's great. Not to say that this is great, but let's say they did. Then seven, yellow. That's the one that's kind of a multiple choice. Yes, it's the makeup artist or hairstylist, but it's also a particular color that someone yelled out. And usually I pick the color whoever yelled it out first. So let's say the stylist yelled it out, but we all liked it. Seven and five. Multiple people liked it. So that lets me know the stylist liked it first because that's their color, yellow. And we all said, oh my God, yes, five star. That way I kind of have a indication of a photo that everyone kind of liked. All right, this one I really like. This one, eh, it's just okay. This one, kind of cool. Maybe the client liked it, nine. This one I really liked. And that's it. Oh, this one I really liked. All right. This one's just okay. This one's, eh, the client liked it. And this one, I liked it. All right. So now that we've done this, we hit the letter G to go back. And we can now see everything. We can see the greens. We can see the blues. We can see the yellow. We can see the five star. We can see the X's on the rejects. And the first thing I do at this point is get rid of the rejects. I don't want them clouding my judgment. I don't want them visible. I don't want to see them anymore. They're rejects. So luckily Lightroom gives you the ability to quickly get rid of your rejects. If you're on the Mac, it's Command Delete from the keyboard. If you're on PC, Control Backspace. So Command Delete, it will quickly go through all your rejects in that particular collection or folder and bring them up in one screen. Now, because I'm not really looking at the real photos here, I'm just looking at smart previews of them, I don't get the choice of delete because the photos aren't here to be deleted. But I get a choice of remove. Now, if the photos were really there, you would normally see delete and remove as your default choice. I always, always, always click the delete button. Because I made the determination that that photo was a reject when I was reviewing. If I was any hesitation on your part from hitting delete, then you have to question, is it really a reject? Or are you just that attached to all your photos and you can't really make a decision? If it's the latter, you need to work on that. If it's the former, meaning it's kind of maybe just okay, then don't mark it as a reject. In other words, when I bring up this screen, I'm ready to hit delete as fast as I can because I know those photos are rejects. There's no hesitation in my mind because when I marked it a reject, I analyzed and hesitated then. If there's any hesitation, it wasn't a reject. If it was, and there was no hesitation, it's a reject, then I should have no hesitation here in deleting them. Now, in this case, I'm gonna use these photos again or these smart previews again. So I'm gonna cancel this, but normally I would just go ahead and hit delete. They're gone, no longer in this collection. Now what I wanna do is get to my favorites. I want the ones I'm gonna post, the ones I'm gonna use. So what I wanna do is go to attribute and just simply turn on the green flag. So turn off everything else that might have still been on from the last time you used this and turn on whatever flags you like. So if they're mine, they were all green. Remember, it could be one that everyone liked. 
So, well, actually, we don't want to do it that way. We want to do it this way. Yellow. So that's one that kind of multiple people liked. And, of course, the blue would be the ones that um, the customer liked. So this way I get to see them all. Now, if I'm just interested in mine, then maybe it's the um, just the greens. Oh, that one. There we go. So that way I can select all. And I can add them to uh, my collection. So let's go ahead and say that we want create collection and we're going to call it Montana faves. All right. And I'm just going to go ahead and add those five or how many ever, ever there are to the collection. Now let's go back because we had one more. If we go to attributes, we had a five star one and that one is kind of one that everyone likes. So I want to drag that one into my favorites as well. So that one is in there as well. So now I have a collection with just the ones I liked. Now, let's say we go back and we give the client their proofs. I normally do it through a web module. That way they get to look at their proofs on the web and click their selections and get an email sent back to me with the numbers of the photos so I know which ones to use. Now, let's say that I got that email back and those photos were the following. Let's say they really liked this one, this one, this one, this one, and uh, we'll say this one. Those are the ones they really, 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 at the end of the day, they went back, looked at them on their own time, and those are the ones they want to pay for. P, those are customer picks. Those are the ones that matter. Those are the ones that are being paid for. Those are the ones that are going to be retouched. Those are the ones that are going to be printed. Those are the ones that are going to be delivered as digital files, however you do your workflow. Now I want to give make those in a collection so that I will always be able to reference them easily. Create a collection and that collection is going to be Montana edits. And now those are the customer picks. It doesn't matter whatever else is in any of the other collections. These are the ones that are being paid for and delivered. So at this point, I would go through Lightroom and use the develop module and develop them further and take them into Photoshop if they need more work in Photoshop and then export them or print them or however we contractually decided that they're going to get these photos. That's my workflow. Now, there's one more thing. Now, I, I told you there were three ways, the flags, the star ratings, and the color labels. Well, Lightroom Mobile adds a fourth way. Let's go back to the original collection. And you'll notice that I shared the original collection uh, on Lightroom Mobile. I basically synced it to Lightroom Mobile. But it's only shared privately with me. I'm the only one that can see it. I can see it on my iPad, my iPhone, or the web if I'm signed in to Lightroom. That's it. Now I want, I want to use this for the client to look at. So remember I said I could use a web module? Well, another way now is Lightroom Mobile. I can say share this, and what that will do is generate a link for it, a public link that I can give them via email, text message, whatever, for them to go look at their photos. Now I can also, of course, click on that link and look at it myself. When I click on that link, it takes me to the gallery. Now, let's say this was the workflow. I sent them, hey, here's the link. Go look at your photos. And if you like one, tell me here in Lightroom. How do they tell me? Well, if you click on a photo, you'll notice that there is a little heart in the lower right-hand corner. And you would have to tell them that. They're probably not going to notice it. And there's a little uh, comment box. Now, the way that they would do this, if they click like, they would have to sign in via a free Adobe ID. That's the way it is right now. They don't have to pay for anything. They don't have to do anything. They just have to create an Adobe ID for free and sign in. But that way you also know who the likes are coming from. So if they like this one, they will click the little like thing and a little one appears there. And then they can go on to the next photo. Next photo. They'll say they like this one. And next photo. They can also leave comments. Or let's, say, let's go back to this one and leave a comment. Uh, they could say, really like this one if it weren't washed out. So that means that they like this one if I can adjust it, and I can. So we can say post comment, 
and that way I'll get the comment back on it and they can put a like on it as well. Now, the beauty of this is all while they're doing this, all of this information is automatically being synced back to your desktop. So as they're going through your photo, their photos, whether you're in Lightroom or not, next time you go to Lightroom, you'll notice that these, this has happened. So let's say they like this one and we'll do one more. And they like this one. Okay, so that's it. Now we head back to the desktop. And on Lightroom Desktop, you'll notice now on the Montana Scenery Collection, whether you were in it or not, there's a little yellow flag. That yellow flag means that there are new comments. And they, of course, could be comments or likes. When you click the flag, it will take, and by the way, you can even see the comments here even before you click the flag. But if you just click the flag, because maybe you have hundreds in here, this will automatically give you the ability to review the comments and automatically sort the collection temporarily so that all the commented photos are first. And where do you see these comments? In the lower right hand corner. So you see that this one has a like, 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 and this one has a like. So you get to see those likes, and if there were comments, you get to see the comments as well. This one has a comment, and we can say, really like this one if it weren't washed out, and you would see who left that comment because they would be signed in. Now, I noticed that these five were likes. Here's another way I could do it. I could say, mark these as picks right now because they were in order up front. I know which ones are like. Mark them as picks, and those are the ones the client wants to pay for. So I could use Lightroom Mobile as my review process or any other method you like to review. And I get the feedback right here on the desktop and there, away we go. So I hope you got something out of the various ways of marking, ranking, and rating your photos. And of course, the additional way now using Lightroom Mobile. Take care and catch you on the next one. Bye. Uh -huh.